The Morgan brothers thought they'd nailed the armed robbery caper, outsmarting police for years, becoming Australia's most wanted men. Now they've done their time. Morning, Dougie. How you are? Martin King for Channel 9. Yeah, I've seen you a few times. Happy anniversary. Of what? Your crime spree 40 years ago. Oh, Did yeah. you forget? <laughs> I've been silent for 40 years. There must be a reason for that. Right. So I raised the gun so it was in line with my... in front of my face like that and looking straight into his face. What's it like shooting someone? You never forget it. The moment I did that, I could see the difference in his feelings, um, his reactions, and he knew it was serious. It's one of the great untold crime stories. This is the mask you wore? Yes. Yeah. Until now. How many stick-ups did you do with that? I don't know. Like, it's too long ago. I'm guessing probably half of them. He plundered banks and TABs, terrifying staff and customers. 24 robberies later, all was revealed. Police had been outfoxed by not one bandit, but two. Identical twins, Peter and Doug Morgan. We had the coppers running all over the place, to be serious. They had no idea. They were running around in circles, could not get near us. And but we planned it like that, for our own safety. Simple. They looked the same, dressed the same, and often hit towns around the same time to trick police. Well, after each job, it was all different. Sometimes a canoe, so we paddled, we walked, we ran, we rode bicycles, we'd ride motorbikes. My brother even got taxis out of the area. Sometimes they even hitchhiked out of the area. Butter wouldn't melt in their mouths. All I want for Christmas is a clean getaway. And they did, until the 25th robbery, when Peter was arrested after shooting a police officer. Morgan, I was too good for you in the laneway that day, and I'll be too good for you now, and you're a dog. More from that angry policeman a bit later. Why did you start robbing banks and TABs? Well, the real reason, Martin, was that um, we actually used to work pretty hard. And a builder didn't pay us leading up to Easter. And uh, my brother was short of cash, and I was a bit short of cash. And I think he cracked it and basically went, we're going to do this. This is Doug, and this is Peter or Pistol Pete back in the day. 40 years down the track, the identical twins have identical attitudes. They're law-abiding and rehabilitated. And back in the building game. Our exclusive interview with the twins doesn't begin well. Doug's alone, so what's the hold-up? Pistol Pete apparently has cold feet. Then out of nowhere, a bit like the old days, he appears. Greater, this is Martin King. I sort of recognise him. Hey. How's it going? Yeah, mate. Your pistol, Pete. Ah, uh, be nice. He's careful, he's guarded, and it's quickly oh, yeah. apparent that these identical twins <laughs> can't stand each other. You fellas have got a love-hate relationship. Yeah. It stems from childhood, but intensified when Peter was caught and broke the twins' code of conduct if one or the other was nabbed. So you don't talk about anything for 12 hours. If I, if I get caught first, I don't talk about anything for 12 hours. It gave the other a chance to hide, but after his arrest, Pistol Pete put his brother in. Do I regret that now? Yeah. Why do I regret that now? Apart from it being my brother, I've seen what it takes to go through a decade in jail. Mm. Don't wish that on anybody. He said, I'll get over it or I'll apologise. I go, nah. You don't ever forgive one of your family giving you up, and that's my only beef. Because, Martin, you're supposed to protect your blood. Even so, the twins are building a house together. It's at framing stage, and as long as they stay out of nail gun range, there's only the building code to worry about, and the reminder that once they were Australia's most wanted men. I still smile a bit when I think about the adventures we had. But the thing that I struggle with now is the intimidation on people. And that's the bit we didn't see then. Beating the police, outsmarting the police, if you like, was a significant 
part of the pleasure they got out of this. At the height of the robberies, Jeff Wilkinson covered the story for Melbourne Sun newspaper. He coined the term the After Dark Bandit. They would frequently announce themselves as, you know, remember me, I'm the After Dark Bandit. <laughs> And back in the day, where would the After Dark Bandits go to get the tools of their trade, their weapons? A dark alley, the black market, another crim. Actually, it was right here. The main gun we bought was from Myers at Chadston. Oh, and a box of bullets, please. When you walk into a bank with a gun, you're the authority. When there's going to be trouble is when another authority comes along and takes your authority away. Like the police. Like the police. And that's exactly what happened to Pistol Pete. The twins' luck ran out when he got greedy, robbed the same bank in central Victoria for the third time and shot senior constable Ray Kosh twice. After you shot the policeman, yep. what did you say to him? As I'm picking him up and didn't drag him and he walked in, right, I actually, my ego did take over and I said, how many banks you got in anyway? Kosh was seriously injured. I told him to be cool, behave yourself, I'll sit you down and I'll get you an ambulance as soon as I finish the robbery. Ray Kosh survived, but the next day it was curtains for the twins' criminal careers. Pistol Pete was 800 metres from freedom, heading for the train to Melbourne, when an eagle-eyed copper, Rick Hasty, spotted him. What was the first thing he said to him? What's your name? And he said, Peter Morgan, why? And I said, well, I run, I run this down, I want to know who's in it. Hasty's retired now, but remembers that day vividly. Morgan pulling a gun, their struggle, and a country copper's good luck that the crook couldn't get the safety off. I got him by the throat up against the wall like this, on this wall here behind me, and he goes, um, you got me, he said, you'll make a hero of yourself. I said, you move and I'll kill you as you stand there. And I was relieved in a really bizarre way when I got caught. What? It was over. You stopped it? Yep, yep. And so, I, so well done you. And I got... I got ordered the Queen's Gallantry Medal. The After Dark Bandits went to jail. They are, or were, Australia's last bushrangers. Now they're the subject of a book, Double Trouble, co-authored by Jeff Wilkinson. The venue for the launch, a bank. The twins weren't invited, but the bank staff they robbed were. A lot better than I did back in those days. I had three months off work after. It's a pizza cafe now, but 40 years ago, this was a bank. Feeding him. And you robbed it? Yep. Doug hid in the bush for three days, counting $39,000. And there's your brother sitting over there. But how much did you give him of the 39K? I gave him 10 grand. 10 grand? For doing nothing. You're identical twins. You boys love each other? <laughs> you use these... I've never even used that on a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward, fascinating story. The brothers say they've kept their noses clean since leaving jail.